On this Super Review Live, we're gonna take a look at the FIO FH3. So this is an in-ear monitor, obviously from the company FIO, you already knew that. But what you might have not have known, maybe you do already know, is that it is a three driver IEM. If you watched my unboxing about two weeks ago, I kind of went over a little bit of the basics of it, but just as a recap, a three driver IEM, you got two balanced armatures from Knowles, as well as one pretty big whopping dynamic driver in there for the low end. And that dynamic driver is coated in beryllium if you're particular about your metal coatings. I don't know that I am, but we can, we will get to that. Um, so as I alluded to, I unboxed this about two weeks ago. So I've spent about two weeks living with this IM and comparing it to some other IMs in the price range, right? I think, you know, this comes in at 130 bucks, so not super cheap, but I think kind of in that nice entry level to mid-fi range where they're up against some pretty stiff competition. I think, you know, the Moondrop Starfield is good competition for this, as well as my personal favorite, the Edemotic ER2XR. Still makes me sound like a robot every time I say it, but that's kind of what I put this thing up against. So let's do this review, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna go through, this is a live review, by the way. Um, I'm gonna go through just some, you know, obviously just start with like the build, the physical aspects of the FH3, and then I'm gonna get into the sound, just kind of describing what it sounds like and then doing some comparison with those other IEMs that I mentioned. And because this is a live review, for the folks that are here live, at the end of the review, I'm gonna give this thing a score and then I'm gonna have a little conversation with you folks in the live chat. For the folks that are watching this not live, I've decided I'm just gonna not show the Q&A for you folks. So if you want to be part of the next live stream, please subscribe to the channel, ding the bell so YouTube will let you know when I'm live and then next time you can chat with me. But for, well, I guess just for everyone, let's get started with the review of the FIO FH3 which we've got here sitting now on this table. So a lot to talk about, I think, with this I am. And the first thing that we'll talk about is just, not those. First thing we'll talk about is just all the stuff that it comes with. I think for 130 bucks, frankly, I think it's pretty impressive. Um, you get this little Pelican case, which, you know, it's a little bit on the large side for what I typically use. Uh, an IM case, like for reference, this is typically how I will store my my IMs, but it is nice that they give you that, especially considering it comes with all this other stuff that you got to, I guess, put somewhere. Uh, the FH3 also came with a little, little softer carrying pouch with it, I think is nice at touch, as well as just a ton of tips. Um, these are all of kind of varying bore width, and they're all silicone tips. I just, frankly, I stuck with the tips that came on this thing stock, which are sort of like a, a medium bore size, but I was pretty happy with that. Um, didn't really feel any need to fiddle with the other tips, uh, but they do also include some foam tips as well as a little eyebrow brush. Then you, of course, you get to the IM itself, and of course it comes with the IMs. They are on a removable MMCX connector cable. Let's see if we can do that for you and well let's talk a little bit about this cable so this cable is I think a pretty attractive cable and frankly it's like it's the same cable that came with the FIO FH5 which is a much more expensive IEM and I like that cable however some things you should know about it one I think that they've changed the construction of this cable at some point this version of the cable I don't like as much as the ver this the other the earlier version of this same cable that I have. This one's just kind of a little bit on the rubbery side. And either version of this cable is a little bit on the stiff side, which you know can be a little bit annoying when you're putting this thing away. Let's see if I can give you a little roll-up demonstration. Uh, the stiffness can be a little bit annoying when you're putting this thing away, but uh, for the most part, you can kind of see I'm struggling with it. For the most part, I think it's an attractive cable at the very least. I think that it looks nice on an IM that costs 130 bucks. And while it might not be the most behaved, most of my complaints are just gonna be, you know, pretty, pretty petty, frankly. It's just, you know, I don't know. What do you think? I guess that held itself together fairly well. Uh, but then we get to the buds themselves. And again, we're just gonna talk about the physical stuff right now. I think that these things 
are kind of fantastic, especially for the price. For $130 IM, this package right here, build quality wise, is pretty impressive. So the, the buds, I think aesthetically they look really good. Let's go ahead and punch in real quick so you can behold them in all of their up close glory. I think they're a pretty nice look. Uh, fairly plain maybe, but I don't know. Like they just, they nailed this really subtle, um, kind of pulled back aesthetic, I think really well. I think in fact, you know, the IM that it kind of reminds me of is the Moondrop K Triple X, which also went with this matte black look. Frankly, I think this looks even cooler. I like the cable maybe on the K Triple X a little bit nicer, um, but I don't know, just being picky there. Uh, let's see what else we can say about it. I mean, these buds are all metal. Let's see if we can give you a little metal test. So that's nice. Um, and they just, they feel, you know, decently hefty, but not overly weighty. In terms of like the shape, I think they've got a pretty nice shape to them. Uh, and, and I'll get, I'll do a little fit test in a second to show you how they fit in my ears, but they've got a nice shape to them, right? They're a little bit molded, not overly aggressive, but they do, uh, they do nestle themselves, I think, pretty well into the ear. The nozzles are a little bit on the long side, which uh, means that, well, they'll fit a little bit deeper maybe than some other IMs, but I think that they fit pretty well and secure. And on that note, I'll just go ahead and throw these things into my noggin for a little bit of a beauty fit test. What do you think? So yeah, I think it's a great fit. Um, it's nice and flush. I'm able to sleep with these, uh, which is pretty good. It's not necessarily the top use case for a lot of people, but I do spend a lot of time sleeping in my IEMs. And so having an IEM like this that I think relatively comfortably I can sleep on my side, I think is a nice thing. The only complaint I'm gonna make about the build here, apart from this somewhat rubbery cable, uh, the only real serious complaint that I have with the build is that there is fairly significant driver flex that I experienced. And I was just kind of reminded of that when I plugged them into my ears. And that just means that when you put these things in your ears and you're creating a seal, that air pressure is going to flex the driver and it just makes like a crinkling sound. It's not bad necessarily for the headphone, it's just kind of unpleasant. So I don't know, that's that's basically the, the gist of the build of the File FH3. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I think, again, for 130 bucks, not just do you get a lot of stuff, I think the stuff that you get is actually pretty nice quality. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, no, no major complaints. So now that I've told you about the build of the File FH3, let's go ahead and get into talking about the sound. And like I mentioned, I, I spent a lot of time comparing these things, especially to the Moondrop Starfield and the Etymotic ER2XR. But frankly, I was also just kind of comparing it to some of my favorite stuff because on initial listen to this thing, I was actually really pretty impressed with it. Now, one thing that stands out a lot, and you'll notice this in the headline of this video is, well, I said too much bass, and I put it in all caps to kind of make a point. This is a very, very, very bassy I am. And if you've watched my reviews in the past, you've probably gotten the sense that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of a lot of bass. And that's true. But I like this. I like this a lot. So um, let's let's kind of give just maybe like an overall tonal character to the sound. It is slightly on the warm side, and maybe more than slightly on the warm side. The low end is quite bassy. But the mid-range is actually fairly, I don't know, surprisingly even. It doesn't have like a strong dip to it. Like it's not a strong V. Uh, the the mid-range, you get maybe a little bit of an upper mid-range boost, but for the most part, the mid-range is fairly even. And then you get to the treble and it's a little bit on the forward side, a little bit on the um, quasi bright uh, aggressive side in the treble. And so I think what you have in the end is somewhat of a, a U-shaped tonality, I think. I think that uh, it doesn't sound funky at all. I think everything sounds pretty natural. You just get you just get like a, a nice even mid range with a lot of bass, and we'll talk a little bit more about that bass. A lot of bass and kind of kind of elevated treble. So that's just kind of like the the overall tone. But let's get into some more details of this here FH three. 
So let's start by talking about the bass. Like I mentioned, uh, a little bit more bass, eh, maybe quite a bit more bass than I typically prefer, but it didn't actually bother me at all on this earphone. And that's for one reason. The bass on the FH3 is just, it is exceedingly tight, very, very well controlled. And despite the fact that it is elevated, in my opinion, the bass on here does not at all like bleed into the mids. It doesn't, it's not boomy, it's not muddy. It is just surprisingly crispy clean. Um, you could, hmm, I don't know, this is, so I talked, I mentioned at the beginning of this review that the, uh, the dynamic driver in here, which is handling the bass, is coated in beryllium. Does that matter? Maybe, I don't know. I don't make, I don't make earphones, uh, so I don't have a ton of experience. I don't have any experience, frankly, uh, with experience experimenting with different driver coatings and understanding the exact effects it has. But my understanding is that beryllium is just kind of a stiff metal. And so what that seems to, the effect that, that seems to have on the base of the FH3 here is that it just, it recovers very, very quickly. Um, you could, if you're being picky about the, the base, the t you could describe the timbre of this as almost a little bit on the rubbery side. But I like that, like it's, that kind of keeps it, you know, nice and tightly controlled without it again, you know, affecting the rest of the mid range. Again, if you're, if you're picky about it, you could maybe have an issue with it being slightly on a little bit on the rubbery side, but the way that it's done, if you want a lot of bass, this is in my opinion, a, a good way to do it. It's just really, really quite well controlled. And then we can get into the mid range, which I said is not clouded up by that bass. And I also described as generally kind of even sounding. Like there is some upper mid range lift, but uh, not a ton, at least compared to some other IMs that I've got, including uh, the Edimotic ER2XR, but we'll get into that comparison in a little bit. Overall, I felt that the, uh, the mid range is actually quite even, quite clean, um, actually surprisingly well detailed too. Um, I think that that's probably the character of the of the mid range that stands out the most is you know that it doesn't feel especially forward, um, and it doesn't sound especially muddy because of you know that bass. It just sounds nice and clean and very very solid on the detail. Um, yeah, vocals just don't come forward as far as I typically like in like sort of my ideal tonality, but. The reason I tend to prefer that as a tonality is because of the clarity that it imparts in the mid-range. And despite the fact that the FH3 doesn't have that strong forwardness, I still find that the mid-range is nice and clear. And then we get into the treble of the FH3, which frankly, I think the treble is probably gonna be the part of the sound that is gonna be the most controversial. Um, I described it as being a little bit forward, maybe quite a bit forward, kind of giving it that U character to the sound. Um, and I do think that the treble here is, uh, it's a bit on the forward and elevated side. It's a bit on the kind of sharp side, but I do think that because of that, it's, you know, it's well extended. It's got a decent air to it. Um, and frankly, I like the treble on this IEM. Uh, again, if you've watched my reviews, you know that I am typically a fan of treble. Like I'm not, I don't shy away from an aggressive treble. And what you get here is a little bit on the aggressive side, not as aggressive as something like uh, the Philips X3s that I just reviewed. That was too much treble for me. These, I think, dance a, a safer line, or they, they dance more safely under the line of too much treble, at least for my tastes. Um, it is, let's see, I mean, like I said, it is elevated. Uh, it can edge on sibilance with some tracks. I didn't find that it made tracks that aren't typically a little sibilant any more sibilant than they are. But uh, if you have any tracks that have sibilance in them, like just for example, um, uh, a lot of churches songs, the vocals in, in their music, they just, they record pretty aggressively in the S's uh, and Frankly, if you listen to it on an IEM that doesn't have rolled off treble, and this one definitely does not have rolled off treble, uh, that sibilance is gonna come through. So this is an IEM that will uh, that will show that. But I, I just find that like, as a balance for the very big bass that these things have, frankly, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, the, the nice side effect of sort of this big bass 
you know, not, not quite big trouble, but somewhat big trouble um, sound is that I think the FH3 actually stages quite white, quite well, especially for compared to the, the Edemotic and the Starfield staging and image layering on this earphone, in my opinion, are just are another another level above. Whether or not that's what you prioritize, I don't know. For me, that's kind of one of the big things that I like in sound is that image layering and the separation between instruments and the, the, the positioning. And I think the FH3 just does it fantastically. Like typically, you know, I, I say this a lot. I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of bass and it's just because in my experience, a lot of bass can intrude on those qualities of the sound, at least, you know, when you're not when you're not looking at super expensive head, headgear. So it's pretty impressive that the FH3 does that big bass without sacrificing that, that spatial, that spatialness that I like. So <clears throat> that is kind of my overall gist of the sound of this I am. Let's see, I'm, the one other thing maybe worth mentioning is this, that the FH3 is a little bit on the sensitive side. It's actually maybe a little bit more than a little bit on the sensitive side. It's pretty sensitive. So it's gonna get plenty loud no matter what source you've got. Uh, the one thing to consider with that loudness is that if your audio source has any hiss, the FH3 is probably gonna pick it up. Uh, it wasn't like overly strong on my Sony Walkman, which has got a little bit of a hiss. In fact, it was, Pretty, pretty negligible, but something to keep in mind if you plan on plugging these things into a phone that might not have the clearest, uh, the cleanest output. So, comparisons. Let's first pull in the Moondrop Starfield, which I did a review of this earlier this year, actually, the Moondrop Starfield. This is another very nice IEM. I frankly like the FH3 quite a bit more. But that doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. So there's gonna be some some people that'll like the, the Starfield, and I think for a couple of uh, uh, pretty important reasons. So why I personally like the FH3 is I just think that uh, imaging is just much, much stronger here. The, the separation and the layering in the audio image, much stronger here. That was kind of my biggest downside with the Starfield is that it doesn't necessarily do that very well. It doesn't do it poorly. It's not an overly 2D image but it's just not the strength of this I am. In terms of tonality, I think, well, the bass here is definitely bigger, um, but this has still got some pretty elevated bass. This is maybe, I think the bass is not as tight here and that's part of why, I, that's part of why maybe I don't like the bass or I don't like this uh, I am as much, or at least I don't get as much enjoyment as I do out of the FH3. But there is that, I think that maybe mid-range tonality um, here's a little bit more forward in the upper mid-range and then treble drops off a little bit more here the, the treble basically Doesn't go wrong at all in the Starfield. You're not going to have any issues with sensitivity to treble here Which can be a plus or a minus for me. I just find it a little bit on the dark side and a little bit on the uh, unengaging side That said like this is just this is a smoother more relaxing sound the FH3 is a bit more intense could be a little bit too intense for some folks, but I find that because that mid-range is just so even, um, I'm still actually able to listen to this thing for pretty long sessions and not get tired of it. But that brings us now to the Edemotic ER2 XR. And this is one I actually like better than the Starfield a little bit. And mostly it's down to the tonality. The tonality on the ER2 XR is fantastic. And in fact, between these two, just on tonality, I actually prefer the ER2, uh, at least overall. I think that the mid-range is more to my taste where there's a little bit more upper mid-range lift uh, and a little bit less bass, actually quite a bit less bass here on the ER2, but it's still pretty strong bass in my opinion. The, the bigger difference between these things tonally, or at least the thing that's gonna, I don't know, make the biggest difference to a lot of folks, frankly, is the treble response. The treble here on the ER2 is very polite um, again, kind of like the Starfield, it rolls off a little bit, a little bit too much for my tastes. But on the other side, this is maybe a tad north of uh, my taste. So my ideal treble is probably somewhere in between here. Um, but that's just kind of a, a, maybe a, a decent difference to make to call out between these two, right? If you are, if you know that you're treble sensitive, I would stick with something like the Edmodic ER2. 
If, however, you're fine with a little bit of aggressive treble, I think that the FH3, it just delivers a bigger sound stage and again, just sharper definition between uh, the different instruments. Um, this is harder for me to choose between these two, like between the FH3 and the Starfield, I personally prefer the FH3. Between these two, it's a bit of a toss up. I find the FH3 a little bit more engaging and an exciting listen, but tonally uh, and just as a, just an, an all day, every day listen, I think the ER2 XR is kind of hard to beat. But yeah, that is the file FH3, which I don't know, you should get the sense by now that I quite like this earphone and I'll go ahead and give it a rating. I think out of five stars, that was awkward. Out of five stars, the FH3, I'm gonna go ahead and give all five stars. I think that, frankly, I'm actually pretty surprised by this IM. I didn't think I would like it this much, knowing, especially going into it, that it was sort of a, a bass heads IM. I didn't think it was gonna be for me, but the, the cleanliness of the, the visual image is just really pretty striking. And it comes down to just that really tight bass. Again, maybe you might have an issue with the slightly rubbery timbre of it, but I don't. I think it sounds great. And I think this thing sounds great with electronic music. It sounds great with acoustic music or just, you know, analog instruments. Everything I threw at this thing, I was pretty happy with it. And it comes in a very nice build with a nice package of accessories for 130 bucks. Pretty impressive file. So if you're interested in checking out this IEM, of course, I've got a link in the description down below. If you found this review helpful, please hit the like button. If you want to be part of the next live stream, subscribe to the channel, ding the bell, and I'll see you on the next super review. For the rest of you watching live, let's have a little conversation.